Hi, today I wanted to answer a comment, a question I had from Jonesy Blitz. It says, cool video. Would you be willing to do a video on setting up your workspace? Something that is step by step like the video, but starts with nothing yet set up. And that's what this video is today. I'm These setups instructions will be for MacBook Pro users or Mac OS users in general. Um, so the first step was going to be, I'm assuming you have a completely brand new laptop, go get Google Chrome. Just go open Safari. Um, just open Safari and type in Google Chrome. All right, go and download Chrome. Once you've downloaded and installed Chrome, go over to Chrome and type in VS Code Mac Download. And select Mac. You can open it up um, and you can download uh, w one of my projects from GitHub. Uh, let's just pull that up. You could go to github.com slash Bobby Row, and you can download one of your one of the repositories for these the videos, like for example, Shattered Rainbows, um, and get started with that. I'm just realizing that you're going to want to install another app besides VS Code. You're going to want to install uh, iTerm2. So iTerm2 is a terminal application, like here. And I'm just going to make it bigger, a lot bigger. This is iTerm2. Uh, create yourself a directory for your projects. Um, I'm in my home directory on my Mac. Right now, I could uh, make a directory called uh, Code Projects and cd into there. And now, inside of here, I can git clone um, Shattered Rainbows. Okay, uh, once I have installed that, I can CD into Shattered Rainbows and fire it up. Um, I could open it up in VS Code. By the way, uh, to do this step, code dot, it's going to open up VS Code. I do, I trust these authors. Okay, um, to do this step, you need to uh, add a command line path for VS Code. Um, it looks, let's see, is this the one I want? This one here. Um, launching from the command line. Um, in order to do this, download VS Code, install it. And now once you've installed it, open, fire it up, and type command shift p to open up this console this palette uh, type install code install code command okay i'll include the link to this in the video description run this command and that will add vs code to your path hang on where's sorry here it here it is and that allows you to type this command code and dot, which means the current directory, to open code in the current directory. Uh, and I like having that power to do that because you can do all sorts of fun things from the command line and you look like a cool person, a professional developer, because you you are a professional developer when you use the command line. Um, okay, so you've got VS Code installed. You've told VS Code how to launch itself from the command line. Um, there's a couple more things we can do. We're actually ready to go. You could start coding um, right now. Um, 
type to do that type you're inside the directory you just created type python dash m simple http server oh my i spelled python wrong okay in chrome navigate to a local host 8000 and there's your there's your project now I can make a change to here let's say I want more or fewer rows just two and save that nothing is gonna happen until I reload and now I've got two which looks ridiculous so to me this is sort of a pain in the butt to make a change in my code, save it, come over here and hit reload. I don't really like that flow very much. So there's some extra steps you need to do to get that automatic reload. Um, and I'm gonna talk about those now. But if you're satisfied with, with this much, uh, downloading Chrome and installing it, downloading VS Code, running it, uh, downloading iTerm2, um, and then adding VS Code to your system path so that you can launch VS Code from the command line. You're good to go. And happy coding. Now, I want to talk about some extra steps you can take to enable the live coding. To do that, um, we're going to install a bunch of things. Uh, the, the, all of it is to allow us to use this node package this this uh, live server okay to get that running you need to install node to install node I recommend that you install homebrew on your machine so to install homebrew go to brew.sh and run this command and you can install homebrew on your system it takes a minute or two um, and you can read more about that here. Once that's installed, you can install Node. Looks like this. Uh, you, you could download it. Um, I recommend that you install Node from Homebrew for a couple of reasons that you can read about on the internet. Stop that simple server. Um, so just to quickly review, I'm going to install Homebrew, which I already did, and then I'm going to brew install node, which I've also already done, and then npm install live ser oh dash g global live server, which I have also already done. So I'm, I'm not doing that again. But now, inside my directory, I can just type live server. And that loads up my, it fires up a server in the current directory. And I can do some changes, save it, and automatically updates. Uh, no reload needed. Okay. That's it. Okay. Thanks. Please let me know if, if this helps or if this doesn't help. And um, as always, leave your comments. Thanks.